You know how every time there's a discussion about Yu-Gi-Oh art, there's always someone complaining about how the art used to be so dark and cool, and monsters actually looked like monsters? Before showing you the most hideous clip art you've ever seen? Well, if you want to annoy people like that, Melfi's are the perfect deck for you. Unapologetically cute, these woodland creatures look like they'd be right at home as stickers on a phone in a pastel-themed aesthetic post. Too specific? Whatever, you know it's true. Melfi's are an archetype with a gimmick that's sadly a bit too slow to work properly. The way it works is that, in your end phase, if you have any Melfi's in your hand, they'll summon themselves to your field. Then, when your opponent summons a monster, they'll run away and hide in your hand, activating an ability along the way. To speed the deck up a little bit, people tried a bunch of beast tech like Obedient Scold, but it still wasn't the best deck around since you don't actually get any points for how cute your deck is. Then came Tribe Brigades. We all know what they do now, but would you believe that they were kind of slept on at release? To the point where I picked up a playset at Fractal for only 6 euros on release because I thought they might be kind of cool with Melfi's. A decision I did not regret. Anyway, while Melfi's were never going to be the best engine for Tribe Brigades, I was right that they do work quite well together. Just like how they work well for pretty much every Beast, Beast Warrior and Winged Beast deck. And thanks to the 2021 Megatons, you don't need to shell out over 100 euros just to play a cute little Beast deck. So, without any further ado, here's what a Tri-Brigade Melfi deck looks like. First, let's start with the Tri-Brigade package. You run three of each of their monsters, including Keras, since the discard effect can actually be useful by itself. You want to get to Fractal as soon as possible, which is why you also run one Tanky, but the others aren't too bad if you draw them since you also run Almirage to get their graveyard effects, and I'll be showing you a combo later with what you can do as a hand like that. You also run 3 Revolts, since Bedroom's effect does conflict with the Melfi's summoning themselves in the end phase, so drawing it is still preferable. For the Melfi's themselves, you just run 3 Catty and Puppy, since the rest sadly just aren't quite good enough. Puppy will usually summon Kalantosa to destroy a card, and Catty will search Hoppy a squadron to sink her into Herald of the Arclight on your opponent's turn. You run 2 Kalantosa, because of a combo that you can do with Rescue Cat to pop 2 cards. Rescue Cat isn't limited to just doing that though, so you run it at 3 because it gives you so much freedom in your combos, and is even searchable before you use your normal summon thanks to Shurag. As other generic beast support, you run 3 of the fabled Cerberel, which is a free special summon off of Keras or Bebrum's discard effect, and also a level 2 tuner, so it helps make Herald of the Arclight or your level 2 Exceasers more easily. Alpha the Master of Beasts helps you take apart boards if you're going second, and going first, it's another beast if you need the discard. For generic support, just run 3 hand traps of your choice, which here are 3 ash blossoms and 3 infinite impermanents. Finally, you've probably noticed how we only run a single spell in the entire deck, so you can safely throw an imperial order to shut down some decks while having zero effect on yours. For the extra deck, let's start with the tri brigades again. You run 2 Ferajit, 2 Shurag, and 1 Bear Broom. Ferajit is both useful for your combos and shuffling back some of the Brickia B support like Kalantosa, and Shurag is your main target for Revolt, but can also be used in combos to search Rescue Cat, and Bearbrum can discard cards like Cerberel in order to extend your plays, or if you don't need to summon a Melfi in the end phase, it can also search a Revolt. You then run one Joyous Melfi's and one Melfi of the Forest. Joyous Melfi's combos with Rescue Cat, where you summon something like Melfi Puppy and a Kalantosa, overlay them into this, and then tribute it to summon both back on your opponent's turn in order to destroy two cards. Melfi of the Forest is a good card for when you can summon a Rescue Cat and you already have a Melfi in hand. Make this with the two monsters that Rescue Cat summons, and then search the Melfi you don't already have, summon both of them in the end phase, and then that will give you three interruptions, a pop from Kalantosa off of Puppy, a Herald of the Arclight from Catty's Hoppier Squadron, and then finally a Negate thanks to Joyous Melfi's effect triggering when one of the other two returns to the hand. Then for your links, you run Double Dragon Lord, which is a Compulse you can summon thanks to a Tri Brigade, a Null Mirage to unbrick your worst hands, an IP Mascarena and a Unicorn for the usual combo, but also linking into an Avermax which provides you with something your opponent will have trouble dealing with, 
as long as you have a way of dealing with your opponent's revolt beforehand. And finally, an Appaloosa to turn your remaining monsters into negates at the end of your combos. For the final slot, we have a bit of a choice. Rugal can work well with Shirag to repeatedly get its banish effect, but I don't tend to make it very often, so as always you can just make Ronin Raccoon, will allow you to beat over pretty much anything your opponent might have, which can definitely be useful. Now onto some replays. If you've been enjoying the video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel, it helps a lot. First off, I'll show a few specific combos that you can aim for, then follow it up with some test hands. Let's start with a combo that actually uses the Melfuse as part of the end board. For this combo, all you need is Fractal or Tenki, any second Trivagade monster, a beast monster to discard, and then the fourth card can be literally anything at all. It sounds like a very specific combo, but it's basically any hand with access to Fractal. Start off with the usual Trivagade line, sending Kit, then Nerval, then adding Keras. Keras discards your spare beast, summoning itself and then banishing four to summon Shurag. Link Shurag and Keras into Ferrajit summoning Rescue Cat, which you can normal summon after summoning an extra Tri Brigade with Ferrajit. Rescue Cat summons Catty and Puppy, and then Fractal banishes two to summon Bearbrum. You now make a Joyous Melfi's and an Avramax. Bearbrum triggers, replacing your fourth card with a Revolt. Now, during your opponent's turn, Joyous Melfi's summons back Catty and Puppy, who no longer have their effects negated. When your opponent summons something, you can return them to the hand, summoning a Kalantosa to destroy it, and then searching a Hoppia, which can then sink her into an Arclight. Now you have an Arclight that your opponent can't just beat over in the battle phase thanks to Avermax, and you also have a Revolt ready to summon a Shirag in order to banish something. Before fixing up your hand was the graveyard effects of the Trivagades. A second version of this combo does everything the same way up until Rescue Cat's effect. This time, summon Puppy and Kalantosa as your Joyous Melfi's materials, and then with the remaining cards, make a 3 material Appaloosa instead of an Avermax. You now get to destroy 2 cards instead of 1, and since there's no Arclight to protect from battle, you also get Appaloosa's 3 negates, backed up with Revolt's Banish. Now for this first test hand, I want to show you how Rescue Cat can save even some pretty mediocre hands. You can normal summon it, and then use it to get out two materials to make a Ferrajit. Use her effect to get out a Tri Brigade, which you can then use to make a Double Dragon. Link the two Tri Brigades into a Bedroom, and then fix up your hand a bit with some of their graveyard effects. Since we already have a Revolt and a Puppy in hand, we don't need Bedroom's second effect, and can focus on Melfi's instead. Discard two cards, including a Cerberal, in order to summon the one you discarded and another one, and then overlay them both into Melfi of the Forest. Detach to search a Catty, and then set Revolt. You now have five interruptions, a Compulse from Double Dragon, a Pop from Puppy, an Omni Negate from Catty searching a Hoppia Squadron to make an Arclight, a Negate from a Melfi returning to the hand with Melfi of the Forest's effect, and finally, a Banish from Revolt. This next hand shows you what you can do as a Nerval or Kit, if the rest of your hand is mostly Malfi's. Normal summon Nerval and link it into Almirage, and then use its graveyard effect to add Keras. Use Keras to discard Cerberal, who summons itself back, and link those two into an IP Mascarena. Both Melfi's summon themselves in the end phase. You've now still managed to end on 4 interruptions from Impern, Unicorn, and your 2 Melfies. Now, what about hands with no Tribe Brigades? Well, you can use Rescue Cat to start those plays too. Normal it to get Kit and Keras, which you can then use to make Melfi of the Forest. Detach Kit to search Puppy, and then Kit's Graveyard effect activates in order to send a Nerval which searches a Keras. Keras discards a Cerberal which summons itself, and then uses its effect to summon Ferrajit. Link phase 2 into an IP Mascarena, then set in Permanent Revolt and summon Puppy in the end phase. You now have a pop and a negate with the Melfies, another negate and a banish from your traps, and Mascarena can either link into a Unicorn, or make an almost indestructible Avermax, will also protect your other monsters from battle. So what did you think of the deck? Have you tried combining Melfies with Tri Brigades yet? 
or do you prefer to try and make them work pure? Tell me down in the comments! And while you're there, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more deck profiles like this! Thanks for watching!